Yo guys, Punkar with another video. So a couple weeks ago, I made a video titled The Most Common Mistakes Made While Leveling in Classic WoW. The response for that one specifically was really strong, so I figured I'd follow it up with a late game tangent version covering the most common mistakes made while raiding in vanilla. I'm beyond excited to get back into vanilla raids again, I mean super super excited, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. So with that, hopefully this video helps you avoid making some more typical mistakes that I've seen over my years raid leading in Classic WoW. Keep in mind that these are just, you know, what comes to mind from my experience. So let me know if you guys have any other insight on the topic in the comment section. I'm still a student of the game and I learned so much from you guys in the comment section of every single video. All right, so here we go. The most common mistakes made raiding in Classic WoW. Let's get into it. All right, now, if you've previously raided in vanilla, you probably already know about this one. But for those of you guys that are newer to the classic consumable and world buff system, this might be news to you. 50% of raiding actually happens outside of the raid. What I mean by this is there's a lot of work that needs to be done in preparation for raids outside if you want to be competitive. The main thing is consumables, obviously, potions or consumables that you can gather from across the world of Azeroth from different processes. Many consumables are really grind heavy or expensive or limited where you won't have access to many, kind of like roids for example. This means if you pop it, your gold and your time investment is ticking down. When it comes to flasks, they last 2 hours and persist through death, but each flask is worth more than 100 gold in the vanilla market. When you have a flask applied, every second counts. So that's pretty much the mistake that I want to go over, not preserving your buffs. If there's downtime in a raid, a 5 minute bathroom break or anything, log off. Preserve the timing on your flask, so log off so that it's not ticking while you're just standing there doing nothing. Same thing after a raid, sometimes you might just finish up your raid night, it was a pretty efficient raid, you cleared everything and you still have an hour left on your second flask that you popped or whatever, it maybe might be your first. Many people will straight up just not log into that character until the next raid and take the opportunity to level an alt, or if they already have an alt at level 60, they'll use their level 60 alt to either farm or do BGs or whatever. Now closely related to this is riding other guilds world buff pops. We've got Head of Nefarian and Head of Onyxia which are used at the gates of Orgrimmar on Horde side or the gates of Stormwind on Alliance side. So when completed you hand it in and it'll give Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer the buff to those within the city walls. Another common one is the Heart of Hakkar once Zul'Gurub is released. So you'll just kill the last boss in Zul'Gurub, which is Hakkar, you'll get his heart and then you'll hand it in. And if you guys have friends in another guild or just happen to know that a world buff is being popped somewhere around the world, jump on the train, head to the spot and collect the world buff alongside them. Get the two hour long world buff and then log out till raid time. And if you know that a horde guild or an alliance guild or the opposing faction is grouping up to uh, gather a world buff, then go with sappers, go with a big group and slaughter them all. Now this is something that's super important and honestly, I don't feel like it's stated enough in the community. It's called target transition. So if you aren't already aware, in many raids, the trash can sometimes be more difficult than the actual bosses themselves. Every trash pack requires a kill order which needs to be marked down, it, it can require CC or sometimes even a strategy that needs to be executed on like hunter kiting. So here's what I mean by target transition. When you're killing the skull and it's dying quick and it maybe has some dots that are ticking on it, it may be near 5-10% to health remaining, switch off of that skull and start hitting X. Unless you're a fury warrior of course, then just execute away. Switch off targets effectively, I've seen it so many times where a mob is about to die and a warlock triggers a new shadow bolt cast on the dying target and the enemy dies before the shadow bolt cast even finishes or the shadow bolt goes off, cancelling the spell and just wasting time. Little things like this are crucial to topping the meters if you're competitive. In Classic, skill doesn't play as heavy a role in performance when it comes to your attack rotations. The attack rotations are pretty simple. Where good players separate themselves from the plebeians is overall, you know, try hard grinding consumables and chance gear while executing on all of the little things within a raid that give them a slight advantage on the meter. This is one of those things. In the modern version of the game, trash is not even really a thing. I mean, you basically just put someone on follow and go eat a, go eat a bologna sandwich during trash. Then come back when the raid boss is there and just try to get, a, you know, the best raid log possible. In vanilla, in my opinion at least, the whole raid is one challenge. It's one big gauntlet. The trash is kind of like a boss itself. This means overall DPS is more important than DPS on bosses in a certain way. Of course, individual elitists will focus on boss-specific raid logs, 
but guild leaders and guild officers will generally look at the overall numbers and get an idea of who's impacting the raid as a whole from the entrance to the final boss kill, effectively transitioning targets on trash and maxing out your ability to do as much damage as possible in an aggregate sense throughout the entire raid is super important, especially for you casters out there. And a tangent point that I can make off this, another mistake that people make is pay attention to raid markers. They're so crucially important in the classic raiding ecosystem. Make sure you know which mob needs to be killed first, which mob needs to be CC'd, interrupted, or you know, whatever it is. Trash mobs have all kinds of different abilities which can wipe your entire raid or just make your life difficult. It's extremely important that you target the skull if the raid leader says kill skull, more so than any other expansion that you've probably played. So follow the kill order at all times. Unless of course your raid leader doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Okay, so we all know that mana is quite scarce in vanilla. So if you don't have the right gear setup or all the consumables that you need, you're gonna run out of mana pretty quickly on pretty much every mana class that there is from casters to healers. Sounds pretty obvious. I mean, bring mana potions, pop a flask, use a mage blood elixir. I mean, of course, those are the obvious ones, right? Yeah. But here's a consumable that I often see overlooked by a big portion of the player base, and it's probably one of the most important ones, or at least the biggest difference maker for mana classes. And on the same line as what I just said earlier, you know, having this little consumable can give you the ability to just push that much further and outperform those around you by virtue of just not having to worry about going oom um on longer fights. It's always been my not so secret weapon, it's called Demonic Rune which I've mentioned in a couple of videos that I've made. Not farming this consumable as a mana user is a massive mistake. In fact, this consumable might be more worth farming than some of the more traditional stat increase consumables that we see. What good is a potion that makes you stronger when you go out of mana for the final 45 seconds of a boss fight and you're forced to just sit there using your wand over and over again? So if we read the tooltip for this item, it basically works like a warlock's life tap. You pop the rune, it deals damage to you, refunding mana in exchange. Why this item is so important is it's on the same cooldown or the same recharge timer as conjured items. So health stones, mana gems for mages, those items. Meaning you can pop it on a different cooldown as your mana potion. So you can pop a mana pot and a demonic rune every two minutes, which almost doubles your mana gain or your potential mana gain from consumable pops during every boss fight. So for mages specifically, why use a demonic rune when you have mana crystals? Good question. So demonic runes give you much more mana back than a mana gem. As a mage, you're gonna be using those three different ranks of mana gems throughout a fight. So each successive gem that you use refunds less and less mana. Also, I've mentioned this before in a previous video that I made, but there's this neat little trick that you can use to get the full use of your demonic runes on trolls in particular, so the troll race. So you'll mix the damage taken from the rune with the berserking racial ability. So if you force yourself to take damage from the rune itself to purposely lower your health, it'll give you a stronger attack speed and cast speed uh, increase effect when popping the racial ability. So as you see on the tooltip, it states that you get from 10 to 30% haste depending on how damaged you are at the time that you use it. I believe you get 30%, the full 30% of the effect at 40% HP. So you try to get yourself down to 40% HP by popping the rune, and then just pop the racial, and it's basically gonna give you the same haste values as a bloodlust effect. All right, so this is another player mechanic mistake, which I see very often once again. This one should be fairly obvious to most, but there's a bit of a point here that I'm trying to make, which follows the trend of what I stated earlier when it comes to target transition. So this is about your offensive cooldowns. A major mistake that I see all of the time is people just not using their offensive cooldowns enough, where people will go through 10 minutes of fighting trash to get to the next boss, without even using a single offensive pop available to them. The average cooldown on your offensive cooldowns is about three to five minutes. So you should be popping them at least two times before the next boss. As I stated earlier, vanilla raiding is not only about the boss fights. You wanna be maxing out from start to finish and having a whole raid of members using their full tool set available on trash to clear through it effectively actually makes a huge difference in the long run. But keep in mind and try to understand when you're using your cooldowns and try to time them effectively so you don't just waste them on a random trash pack that dies in two seconds and then your, your all of your major cooldowns are ticking when the boss actually starts. So get an idea of the timing and when it's good to use them and try to be tactical about your decision making. 
Also, this notion of using your cooldowns also applies to boss fights themselves. So some fights are pretty long in vanilla, like Razor Gore for example, where the first phase is basically time gated since you need to actually kill all of the eggs before you transition to the second phase. So make sure to use your cooldowns on the first phase early since they're going to be back up during the second phase when you're actually nuking Razor Gore himself. Alright, so here's another basic one that most of you guys are probably going to shrug at again. But from my experience raid leading over the years, you always run into people who still struggle with this concept to this day. Don't mess up your CC. And in particular, what I'm trying to get at is reapplying your CC. So crowd control is an integral part in Classic from dungeons to raiding pretty much through the entire endgame process, and keeping that target CC'd may be the difference between a wipe or not, or at least a clean pull and a messy pull filled with deaths. So reapplying CC on your assigned target is extremely important. This is especially important for Warlocks in particular. Warlocks have an ability called Banish, which can be used on enemy demons and enemy elemental targets, banishing them for 30 seconds at max rank which is rank 2. When banished, the target becomes immune to all attacks and effects. This means you need to time your next application of banish, the actual cast time, with the leftover duration of the current one applied, so you can time them properly, transitioning from the first banish to the second without the mob being released onto the raid unattended for even one second. You actually need a cooldown tracker in vanilla to monitor debuff timers on enemies. So you'll need a banish timer tracking tool so you can time your reapplication of your banish with that timer. And keep in mind that banish rank 1 is a 20 second CC duration and banish rank 2 is a 30 second CC duration. Now for this one, if you aren't aware, threat is way different in classic WoW than it is in the modern game. It's really delicate, and this is because tanks don't pull an exceedingly higher amount of threat than the top DPS in the raid, especially in respect to Warlocks and Fury Warriors. Warlocks do shadow damage, and for some reason shadow damage is coded in a way where it just pulls more threat than the other spell school alternatives like Arcane, Frost, and Fire or Nature, and Fury Warriors are just Fury Warriors that just do a crazy amount of damage and pull threat off you, and they have Heroic Strike, which they use single target, that deals a high amount of threat. So just don't overdo it. Download a threat meter to monitor the tank's threat on the target that you're hitting and make sure that you don't pull aggro. Keep in mind, in Classic WoW, you need to overtake the tank's threat by 10% to pull the mob off of him in melee range and 30% if you're outside of that melee range. So be smart about the damage that you're dealing. Give the tank some time to pick up the mobs, then get going. And for AoE, it's the same thing. Don't just kill yourself by blindly AoEing all of the mobs and making everyone's life difficult. Okay, so last one is coordinating your resurrection casts with other healers in your raid group. There's no mass resurrection button in Classic WoW. You can't just click a keybind and then res the entire raid, all 40 people in one shot. And if there's 30 dead targets laying around after a wipe, with only a couple leftover healers stuck resing everyone, they need to individually cast target by target and get them up one by one. This means you don't want to overlap casts on the same target as another healer. The way people tend to avoid resing the same target is with a macro. You just write a simple macro that states who you're targeting with the percent %t function. So you write, uh, I'm casting resurrection on percent %t, followed by the cast command to actually res that target. This warns those around you exactly who you're targeting the cast on, as to not overlap with other people. So if you play a class that can res, just make sure to make this macro when you're heading into raid, it helps a ton. So there you have it, that's it for this one fellas. These are the most common mistakes that stuck out in my mind for this one. Let me know in the comment section, like usual, if you guys have any mistakes that should be avoided in relation to classic while raiding that I may have missed. I definitely didn't cover all of them. I love reading your insight in the comment section. You guys actually help me a ton when it comes to correcting myself or you know improving my content, understanding vanilla to an even deeper extent or reminding reminding me of things that I may have forgotten over the years, you know, I'm human just like you guys, sometimes I make mistakes or misremember things, but you guys are hawks and, you know, push me to try hard and just fact check everything and make sure that I'm pronouncing words right, like, <laughs> thanks for keeping me in check, boys. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill, soldiers. Join the Discord, although a little warning, it's a free speech zone with a lot of political talk similar to in a way, so if you guys have delicate sensibilities, I don't censor people, so don't expect me to ban people for your sensibilities either. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys on the next one, peace.